Thank you guys. It's such an honor to be here and to join you guys today. Um, so thank you for inviting me as a guest speaker, Toby, just to share my testimony. Um, so yeah, like Toby said, I first, um, I guess I, I received true salvation um, when in 2015, that was when I met this church. And um, just so I guess a little bit of history before um, I met the church was um, actually, I don't know, I'm pretty sure you guys have never heard of the Hmong people, which is what I am. I am Hmong. It is a, a type of people, but we don't have a country. So uh, yeah, but there's a lot of Hmong people currently in America. I was actually born in America too, but my parents are not. So um, so the Hmong people, we don't like, you know, most Hmong people well, or originally Hmong people, they believe in like shamanism. And so they didn't believe in the Bible or anything like that. So I did not grow up listening, like going to church or, you know, learning about God or any of that. So I knew like the name God um, and I kind of knew the name Jesus, but I never knew anything about it and like, you know, who they were or, you know, um, not even like the basics. So that's how I grew up. But then one day, um, you know, I was actually in, in college and um, all of a sudden I like felt like some somebody was pulling me. Um, it's so funny. Someone was pulling me to this booth, um, this table, and they, they were promoting something called Christmas Cantata. Um, do you guys know Christmas Cantata? No. Yeah. So it's a, it's a Christmas musical. Um, it's the so cantata means like a story told through time and it kind of portrays the true meaning of Christmas. So Christmas is all about the birth of Jesus Christ. Right. Um, and it was performed by the Grosh's choir and they are like one of the world's best choir because like also in 2015, they won a competition um, in Germany and like that was like one of the hardest competition choir co choral competition in the world and they got the grand prize so that's why we can like say that they were a really they were like one of the world's best choir and um so like someone was pulling me to that table where they were promoting Christmas cantata and it was so weird I'm like I'm like okay and they were looking for volunteers um and when I was in high school I loved volunteering like I did a lot of volunteer work I think I I felt like I spent more time volunteering than actually going to school or studying or something um because I just like it was just always so like so fun and um I wasn't doing any volunteer work after I graduated from high school so then I was like okay maybe I'll give it a try and um so we would go volunteer and then it was during my volunteer time that I, um, after we came back, that was when I first heard my very first mind lecture, um, which is what you guys have been listening to too, yeah, mind lectures. And also the, like during the Bible seminar, the pastor, or the post Bible seminar, we had mind lectures. So I heard my first mind lecture and for some reason, it just felt like it made so much sense. Like it connected so much things. And so I really, I was really interested in the mind lecture and that's what kept me coming as a volunteer. Um, and eventually like, you know, I, they started like, you know, telling us about the gospel. And that was how I, like, I learned that Jesus Christ, you know, he died on the cross for my sins. And like, so that I have like no more sins and I, I, I am a righteous person. And I was so confused, but then like, but then like, for some reason, like I felt like a huge peace come into my heart and I was so happy just hearing that. And like, I kind of cried, like when I learned how like Jesus died for my sins too, like for the world. And, and I was really thankful. And so I still remember that day precisely. And it was in September too, so just not too, too long ago, five years ago. Um, so that's how I met this church and how I like came to learn about the Lord in my life. Um, and it's really amazing because now when I think back about it and how I met, like how I started hearing the gospel, I really felt like it was God who was leading me because none of it was like, none of it happened because I chose, I chose it for myself or because I wanted to, but it was like God leading me to this position. Um, so that was what I was most thankful about. And like, you know, just throughout my life, ever since then, I, I started to learn like one by one, how God is leading me in my life. Like, um, um, in 2016, so in Korea, we have our biggest world camp ever. And like for me, luckily in 2016, I was able to attend the world camp. And when I attended the world camp, 
Um, so I'm Hmong, so I don't speak any Korean, but I like, you know, um, it's an international world camp. So, so many countries from all over the world came, but it was so amazing to experience that. And so then I was there, but then I went there for, I was in Korea for four weeks, four weeks in South Korea. And, um, you know, it was fine at first, but eventually like, you know, you're in a new culture, you're like, you know, it's a language that you don't know and it's a new surrounding. And so like, eventually you start to face like difficulties, right? Just like tiny like bumps in the road that you have to overcome. But at the time, like, you know, right now it looks like it was just little problems. But at the time, like I started to like have a lot of difficulties, but I didn't like know how to share it with anyone um, because I didn't know a lot of people, but like I took it as a challenge. And so I just went and then eventually it, it was like towards the end of the camp when I realized like I was having a really hard time. So I just kind of like open like like just open my mouth and I shared it to anyone um any of the people around me like even though we because we had like groups and stuff like that and so even though they they may have not understand English completely and even though like I couldn't speak Korean or I couldn't there there was a lot of like Chinese students there there was people from Africa from India from the Philippines from Ukraine from Europe it was so amazing so many people was there and so I just like for the first time, I just opened up my heart, my heart, and um, that was how I learned how to open up my heart. It's just opening your mouth and sharing anything, uh, and so that's how I was able to let go of all the like, all the difficulties that has been stacking up inside of my heart. And like, right after I shared my heart and like how the like how I was like kind of having a hard time there because I couldn't speak the language and everything was kind of new to me it's like, it's like, you know, like, it's like a jar that has so much pressure in there that when you open it, everything just kind of releases. And then like, you know, I felt like ever since then, that was the first time in my life I experienced that, ah, uh, like sharing my heart, as long as I just let it out and open my heart, then like happiness could enter me. And so as soon as I shared that testimony, like happiness automatically entered my heart. It's not like anyone like it's not like anyone like was telling me something or like, you know, but it was just the first time for me experiencing how I can open up my heart. And that's what, like before then people would say that to me, but I didn't know what it meant. And so I was really thankful for that. And then I came back that year and I went to um, an English camp. So we do English camp as well. So we go to Mexico and we teach students English there for four days. And it's really amazing because honestly, you can't teach a lot of English in four days, but we go there to um, spend time with these kids because they um, like, you know, it's not easy for them to get a good education. And so it's like, it's just for us to go down there and kind of connect with them and give them hope to not give up. And um, so it was really an amazing experience. And then uh, I, I did that. And then uh, all of a sudden my, my pastor came to me and he was like, there is a workshop going on. And if you want to learn about faith, um, the, the students should go and attend this workshop. And at first I'm like, it's a workshop. So it sounds boring. I don't think I'd want to go, but, but I'm, but then the pastor kept like asking us, if you want to learn about faith then you should go to this workshop. And so I, I didn't want to in my heart, but then I was like, I was listening to the pastor and he was saying, go and learn about faith. So I was just like, automatically for some reason, I just said, yes, I would go. And that was how I started going. And I like, you know, it was an event. I thought that would, it would be like boring. I thought that like, you know, I wouldn't like it, but then like when I went there, honestly, it was, it was like one of the, the best workshop I've ever been to. It was so amazing. We heard those so much word, like the word of God. And it was for like the youth students. And so we actually had a lot of fun. Like we went like paintball shooting, we went kayaking, all these things. And after I came back from that, the, the new heart that God was showing me that if I let go of myself and if I like, you know, like don't follow my thoughts, and instead, if I let God lead my life, it's so much more, it's so much better than me trying to lead my own life. Like, you know, and so that was the first time in my life too, that I realized that if I let, leave my life into the hands of God, then he will lead me. Um, and I was so thankful for like, you know, being able to learn that. And so ever since then, I started to gain the heart. So in, in our um, mission, there's a program called the Good News Corps program. And it's like a program for college students to go and uh, volunteer overseas for one year. So it's kind of like, you know, going on a mission trip, right? So uh, ever since then, I kind of had that heart that I, I kind of want to go and do this program and volunteer overseas for a year. So 
um, that was in 2017, which led to 2020, right? So this year, at the beginning of this year, um, I finally was able to go and I went to Argentina um, for a mission trip. And as you guys all know, 2020 has not been the best because like the coronavirus broke out. And so, um, you know, I went with, uh, I went to Argentina again, like as a challenge, because I, I didn't speak any Spanish either, but I wanted to go challenge myself and learn something new. And then coronavirus broke out and I, I had only been there um, for like, I was only in Argentina for a total of one month out of the eight months that I've been gone. Um, and, but I was able to go to other countries like Uruguay and Paraguay. So I was there for a while too. Um, I was mostly in Uruguay because I was kind of stuck there. I, was, I went there for an English camp as well. And then when coronavirus broke out, Argentina, they had to close out their borders. I was not able to go back. And so I was kind of stuck there, but, um, and you know, I realized that like, you know, like God, God has put me there in that position too. Like he put me in Uruguay too. And uh, when I decide to just follow the plans that he had for me, um, it's like, it completely changed my heart. I realized that like, you know, I had the heart that I wanted to go there and serve and like, you know, to volunteer, right? But then honestly, there was nothing that I could do for the people. But the time, the short time that I was there, people were treating me so well, like just a stranger. And they were so warm and hospitable to me. And um, everything was like truly receiving God's grace. And I was so thankful um, during my short-term life, like, you know, and like, you know, there was really nothing I can do. And you guys know that like during the Bible seminar, Pastor Park always said that the like Jesus comes and help those who can't help themselves. They can do nothing for themselves. Like, you know, like that man that was beaten half dead and nobody could help him, but the good Samaritan went and helped him. And so, you know, I was like that person that I could do nothing. And like, I was like, you know, I, I was just in that position where I can speak the language, but like, I never felt like, I never felt scared or I never felt like God was not helping me. And so my short-term life, even though it kind of seemed like a failure because I couldn't do much and coronavirus broke out. And so uh, it, even though it doesn't seem like, you know, I was able to do anything, but honestly, this was the most amazing experience that it's, that's been in my life. And this is how God has been leading in my life. And one of the best things that I've learned on this trip was that like every little step of the way, every moment, every difficulties that I experienced, if I just acknowledge God, that like, oh, God led me here, God is helping me, then I realize that's how like, I can be happy and happy. And like, if I like trust everything into his hands, then he is leading me. And so um, that's how I've been walking with the Lord up until now. And that's how he's been like teaching me in my life. And like, you know, I'm so thankful that like even trying to receive salvation or like, you know, washing away my sins. It's not up to like, it's not that I have to do it, but it's all up to God. And that is the, the best like blessing that I can ever like, you know, receive. So um, I guess that's just a little short story of like, that's just my testimony that I wanted to share. So thank you so much for your time and for listening to my story. <laughs>